Hey team, thanks for joining me on today's session. The purpose of this video is to talk about the state testing practice portal, and it is very similar to the real SBAC. In my last video, I talked about how the CASP and the SBAC and the end of your state test are all the same thing. Your teacher might refer to them using each of those different names. The purpose of today's training is to talk about the ELA portion of the end of year state assessment. When you access that area, your screen will look very similar to this. In my last training, I talked to you about the back and the next button, the save and the pause button. I also talked to you about the drop down menu that shows you what series of questions you're working on. In this specific area, you have these two arrows. These two arrows will allow you to either view all of the text or just the questions or both the text and the questions at the same time. So if you want to have that center divider move, just simply choose one of these buttons in order for that center divider to either move to the left or the right. On the right hand side of the screen, we have four buttons. I'm gonna talk about the question mark a little bit later. Zoom in and zoom out are pretty self-explanatory. And then the line reader, in my opinion, is an important tool for this portion of the test. When you click line reader, it will look like this. You'll notice on the left hand side how there's that blue band on top of the text. That blue band will highlight just one line of text and then use the down or the up arrow on your keyboard in order for that blue line to move up or down so that your eyes can clearly focus on that specific area of the screen easily. As you move through this portion of the assessment, you have the ability to use the highlighter. Step number one is that you cast a shadow on the text. Use your mouse, use that index finger, click down, slide, let go, and then you're either going to choose the stack of pancakes that you'll see over here on the left, or you can use the right click button on your mouse and then the highlight tool will appear directly inside of the text. You have four different colors to choose from and if at any point you change your mind, you can remove any one of those colors from the text that you have placed there. You'll notice right here how I have chosen the pancake and then it re says reset highlight. That's how you can undo any of the highlights that you have made in the exam. The glossary will appear throughout your assessment in somewhat random locations. Right here, my arrow is pointing to where it says cowboy boots, and it looks like there's like a microscopic line on the top and the bottom of cowboy boots. Anytime you see that microscopic line on the top and the bottom of any text, you'll know that there's a glossary associated with that word or that phrase. By clicking one time on that word or phrase, the glossary will appear. It will let you know what that word or phrase means. And then when you no longer need that, you'll notice that there's a little X right here. When you click on the X, that glossary box will disappear. Inside the pancake for each question, you will notice that there is a drop down menu. Mark for review, notepad and strike through are just some of the items that you might see in that drop down menu. If you have marked a question for review, you'll notice down there on the right, it says unmark review item. So if at any point you want to flag any question because you want to come back to it later, you would simply use this tool in order to flag or unflag any question. In that same drop down menu, you'll notice how it says tutorial. If you click on tutorial, then a new window will pop up teaching you how to use the software. It will not teach you how to answer that specific question. However, it will teach you how to click or drag or select something using this online software. When you no longer need the tutorial, simply choose the X in the top right corner and that will disappear. The notepad is a tool that you can use in order to take notes. I know it sounds sort of redundant. If you have key ideas, if you want to remind yourself of some strategies that your teacher gave you, or if you want to build an outline based on the text, or if you just want to include some ideas or some thoughts, this is a safe place to jot those ideas down. Please make sure that when you use the notepad, you are using wisdom, and please note that this area will not be graded. 
It will be read by the individuals who are scoring your exam, but this will not impact your overall score. The strike through button, in my opinion, is an effective tool. It gives you the ability to cross off any answers that you think are incorrect. Simply use the pancake on the top right for any specific question and then click on any of those answers that you believe might be incorrect. Please remember that it is completely your job and responsibility to ensure that you have chosen the correct answer. Make sure that you click on the bubble or the boxes that represent the correct answer. The highlight tool is often used inside of the text, but please remember that the highlight tool can absolutely be used inside any of the questions to highlight key ideas, thoughts, vocabulary words, or to remind yourself that there's more than one part to that question. Throughout your exam, you might see different audio buttons. Please use that play button in order to start the audio. I highly recommend that you listen to that audio file several times. Do not assume that you're going to understand all of it based on just one listen through. The audio tools may look different. They're both similar because you're playing an audio file, but it's okay if some of those tools look different from one another. Be sure to evaluate how many parts you see in each question. You will not get full credit for any question if you have failed to answer all parts of that question. Please be careful to read through each question carefully and slowly. Feel free to read through each question more than once. When you move to the essay portion of the exam, you will have access not only to the dictionary, but probably a thesaurus as well. If you've never used a thesaurus, it is a great tool that helps you locate other words. For example, if you want to include the word big in a sentence, and then you scratch your head and think to yourself, hmm, I should use a different word. Big is kind of a simple word. What's an alternative? Well, if you type the word big into that search box and then click on thesaurus, it'll give you a list of alternative words like colossal, gargantuan, enormous, or grand. And then you can choose a better word for that specific answer. Team, it's now time for us to head in. If you have not clicked on the link in Google Classroom yet, go ahead and click on that link. Let's come down to sign in. We're gonna click on sign in. After you choose sign in, select your grade from the drop-down menu. After you've chosen your grade from the drop-down menu for today's lesson, we're going to choose ELA practice test. Once you have chosen ELA practice test, we're going to choose the select button at the bottom of the screen. After you've chosen select at the bottom of the screen, make sure that you watch the video on that next screen, followed by the green button that says I could play the video and sound. I could hear and see the video, followed by the green button where you're letting the computer system know that you were able to see and hear the video. Once you've selected that button, choose the continue button at the very bottom of the screen. You must do the first two steps in order to choose that continue button. And then on the very next screen, you will find the begin test now button. Team, thanks so much for watching and have a great day.